once the exterior of the boat is completed, I would actually climb inside of the boat with the uh, boater's permission. Okay. Um, and at that point, we'd start checking other compartments under the seats, life jackets, so on and so forth. Okay. Like a pleasure boat like this. Right. The inside is actually not too bad because it's pretty open. Right. Right. So, you know, besides checking the lines, the uh, if they ski, you know, the ski ropes and everything else, what they're going to really check is the bass boats because we have 10... Tackle. 10 different lockers, yeah. we have Hughes Ice Chest, we have Live Wells, and this is the stuff that I actually get dinged on um, for getting on the water. So we pretty much understand that. Now, is there any other thing that's really important for a ski boat or a pleasure boat that you guys see that that you run into for, for failing during the week? Ice chests. Ice, ice chests. Chest. So yeah. what's the deal with the ice chest? Um, bottled water, it sounds really, it sounds really strict, but Bottles of water that are half full for right. a boat. Um, an ice chest that you take out of your car and put in the boat or take out of the house and put in there. If it's got ice and ice water and everything else. Yeah, we know we see the bag in there, but what else has been in there? How much? How long has all the moisture been in there? Right. Um, where has it come from? And it's not so much that it's the ice, ice chest and it's the ice water. It's when you go to Havasu and you climb out of the water and the first thing you want to do is grab a beer or grab a soda or whatever and you reach into that ice chest with all this water dripping off you, what kind of contamination have you done to the inside of right. the ice chest that is now containing all this moisture? So that's the biggest thing with the portable ice chests. Um, but you start, you know, once you get into a boat, it's, you know, a bottle of water that maybe somebody filled up at the lake and wanted to take home for, you know, whatever reason. These are things we just have to take into consideration. Right. So it's... It's not like what we hear, you guys aren't being anal about it, but what you're trying to do is create a foundation or a, a baseline right. of keeping a boat clean and dry. Right. And once we are able to do that, especially for cast steak, you guys, like you said, you already have Pyru Pyramid and cast steak on board for all three. Right. Once they understand that clean and dry is good throughout the state, and it's, it's a state mandate thing already, and they know cast steak is doing the best they can for clean and dry, we're probably not going to have as many problems going to other lakes if they if they jump on board with that. We hope so. First thing I notice, even with the engine cover being open, is a completely saturated carpet. Let's look at that. <clears throat> oh, yeah. yeah, and that could be like you said before, you know, oh, I, it was in the rain, sprinklers, but you don't know that. Exactly. So they could have been at Havasu yesterday. Yeah. If you're going to spend the time to to dry out your boat, take a vacuum to it, yeah. and make it easier for you guys. Because right. the more we make it easier for you, the faster we get on the water. The faster everybody gets on the water, because right. the faster the inspection goes. If I can climb on this boat and it's clean and I can look at it, grab a life jacket, you know, look in the compartments, we're right. in and out of here in five minutes. You guys are actually looking at the life jackets, Absolutely. making sure they're clean and dry. There's, yeah. a, there's a really good test. If you wanted any idea, and it was put to me, by somebody else that if you want any idea of what a villager is like, take a tablespoon of salt, put it into a, a glass at home, a clear glass. You can see the salt. Right. Put, you know, half a cup of water in there. Stir it around, let that salt dissolve. You know the salt's still in there, but you can't see it. Right. Those are villagers. That's exactly what you're talking about. Those are the the microscopic quagga muscles. Right. And just and that's because why it's a clear glass of water doesn't mean that salt's not still in there. Right. So that's kind of what we're up against. You know, that lives in your carpet, that lives in your bilge, that lives just about anywhere. Okay. So those are things that you have to take into consideration. Okay. Ski locker. You want to do an inspection? Oh! Ho, 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 ho. Yeah. There's another 60 gallons of water in there. And you know what? I didn't see that in the back bilge area. That's a whole yeah. different well, this whole well, thing. Well, it'll drain to the front, but... Um, yeah, typically your ski lockers will go to the front, but a lot of times what we find in here are ballast tanks. Well, here's a big question since we're hitting, does this have a bilge pump in it? Does this boat? So besides, here's the big thing guys, if you have a live well or a bilge pump, besides making sure it's dry, make sure you hit all your bilge pumps because that could be going on. Even though you think it's dry here, you might turn on, you might still have a couple gallons in the bilge, in the piping. 